Good morning, Sunset. Good morning. It's our privilege and honor to be gathered once more in the house of the Lord. Let us open our hearts and prepare to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Our call to worship will be read responsibly. It is in the bulletin and it is also on the PowerPoint. So please join me. Come with us on this Lenten journey to the temple. The temple, the temple is, is a great, great house, house of, of the Lord. Lord. But sometimes even greed and selfishness can enter the temple. Be with us, Lord, as we enter this step. The Lord will be asking us to recognize our selfishness. Lord, hear our cries. Amen. Our first hymn will be um, in PowerPoint, and it is entitled God of the Women. confess together. Patient Lord, we have cluttered the temples of our lives with so much unnecessary things that we have walked out to your healing words of hope and mercy. We have been keenly aware of our economic situation and have spent much time and energy worrying about these things. Forgive us when we have been so preoccupied with these things that we have not listened to your words and followed your ways. Clear away our fears and frustrations. Give us clean hearts and spirits. Help us to be confident in your mercy and transformational love. These things we offer in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. My brothers and sisters, who is in a position to condemn us? Only our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Christ died for us, Christ rose for us, Christ reigns in power for us, and Christ prays for us. Brothers and sisters, believe the good news. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Amen.
welcome to you all on this beautiful morning. We are blessed that uh, it seems the winter wants to hang around a little bit longer here in South Florida, so we've got a little bit more cool weather this morning. Um, it's nice to see the sunshine after the rains that we experienced last night. Let us now listen for God's word to us, first from Psalm 19, from the Old Testament, and from Mark chapter 15, verses 40 and 41 from the New Testament. Please listen for the word of God. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the world. Their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. It's like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, the honey of the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive me my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Lord, my rock and my redeemer. And from Mark chapter 15, verses 40 and 41. Some women were watching from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James the younger and Joseph, and Salome. In Galilee, these women had followed him and cared for his needs. Many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem were also there. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I have a, I have a little something here. I don't know how well you can see it. Can anybody guess what this is? If I turn it upside down and shake it. A salt shaker. Oh, I got salt on my, on my paper here. Right. A salt shaker. So usually on any table, anywhere in this country especially, you will find salt in any restaurant, any fast food place, right? You'll find some salt on the table. Maybe after coronavirus, not so much. Maybe we have to ask for little packets of salt now. But they used to be everywhere, right? Salt shakers. But usually there's something else that goes together with a salt shaker, right? Pepper. Got my salt, got my pepper, I'm ready to go. Salt and pepper both together complement one another and they give flavor to food, especially um, if there's food that's kind of lacking in flavor. We can put a little salt and pepper on it and it can make a really great flavor to the food. Salt and pepper are usually in similar containers. Maybe they look on the outside alike. But on the inside, they're very different. They don't taste the same, right? But in spite of their differences, salt and pepper go together perfectly. And true friendship can be kind of like salt and pepper. And today, we heard in the scripture about some women who were with Jesus, and they became friends to Jesus. They came together and helped him in all kinds of circumstances. 
People can have differences between them, but in spite of those differences, they can find common ground to share good times and bad times. Salt and pepper can make a meal delicious, and true friends can take a bad situation and turn it into something wonderful. You'll almost never find salt without pepper. And like salt and pepper, true friends are the ones that stick with you no matter where you are, whatever situations you may face. So I hope that you can have friends who are just like these women were for Jesus, and that you can be that kind of a friend in good times and in bad times. Let's pray together. Gracious God, just like salt with pepper, Help us to be good friends to those you put in our lives. Give us those kind of friends, too, because we need them. Just as Jesus needed those women who were his friends. We pray all these things and give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we show you the Lord's name. celebration of the gifts of women, we are going to read together a litany for the gifts of women from scriptures in for today. Holy and loving God, giver of every good gift, you set us on paths of justice and compassion. Receive our thanks and praise. On this day, to celebrate the gifts of women, hear our gratitude for women from the scriptures who inspire us by using their gifts for serving you with both humility and courage. From Miriam, the prophet, who as a young girl cleverly helped to save her baby brother Moses 
She later, she later led the women in singing and dancing after crossing the Red Sea. For Deborah, who served Israel as both judge and prophet, with wisdom, humility, and strong faith. Her courageous leadership brought justice, saving many who were oppressed. We give you thanks. For Abigail, who boldly and humbly approached King David, persuading him to accept her intervention on behalf of her husband's cruelty, thus saving her family and saving the king from vengeful bloodshed. For Esther, who risked her life and negotiated with the king to save the Jews from an nation. We give you thanks. For Mary, who willingly risked humiliation and rejoiced in being chosen to give birth to Jesus. For the woman at the well, who risked speaking to Jesus as a woman alone, and who then shared the good news about him throughout her community. We give you thanks. For women like Lydia and Priscilla, who used their financial resources as well as gifts for leading and hospitality to support the ministry of the Apostle Paul and others. For Tabitha and the many unnamed women in the early church for their selfless and tireless work for the hungry and the helpless. We give you thanks. And we thank you for the women of today at Sunset and elsewhere, who faithfully use their unique gifts to serve you, whether it be distributing food and clothes to those in need, cooking or serving meals, cleaning the kitchen, teaching children and adults, serving in leadership positions, singing or helping to lead worship, encouraging the sick or grieving with visits, calls, or cards, decorating for the seasons, greeting and welcoming, faithful giving, and the many ways of serving that go unseen. We give you thanks. And we also thank you, God, for the men who serve together with women, encouraging them to use their unique gifts and supporting the women in any form of ministry that fits their gifting and passion. Hear our thanks and praise, O oh God, for we pray in the name of the one who dwells in our midst and calls us to serve Christ Jesus our Lord. famous Peanuts comic strip, Lucy complains to Charlie Brown that she hates the new year that they're living in so far, because it's supposed to be better in so many ways, but it's not. And finally, she declares, she declares, I don't think this is a new year at all. I think we've gotten stuck with a used year. Does anybody feel that way about 2021 so far, if we're honest? Um, now we're in the month of March already, and I, I heard about a meme that asked the question, are we just going to let March come back again after how it badly behaved last year? But there are some bright spots on the horizon. There are vaccines that are being administered, and there is a decline right now, at least in the number of cases of the COVID infection. So there is progress happening it's just so much slower than all of us probably would have hoped for. And today as we celebrate the gifts of women to our faith, to our communities over so many years, we have to confess that things have moved even slower in those 2,000 years since Paul first declared that there was no longer Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, but that all are one in Christ Jesus. Unfortunately, in the history of Christianity, such a powerful declaration did not lead to an instant valuation of the con contributions of women to our Christian tradition. 
Jesus was born into an extremely patriarchal society, and the Greek and Roman and later European cultures that received the Christian faith were not much different. It was not until the 17th century that a woman named Elizabeth Houghton became the first Christian pastor in the Quaker tradition. And it would be hundreds of years later, in 1956, that the first woman was ordained as a pastor in the PCUSA. Her name was Margaret Town. And even today, ordained women struggle to find churches that will call them as pastors, and their salaries lag far behind those of men. In light of this ongoing struggle for equality, one could easily forget that women were prominent in Jesus' ministry, even among his disciples. And today I'd like us to take a look at some of those women who followed Jesus, at least those that we know about by name from the Gospels. The most prominent woman in the Gospels is, of course, Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary is celebrated for her faith at hearing the announcement of Jesus' birth from the angel, as well as her presence with Jesus at the crucifixion. But even Mary had her doubts at times, just like Jesus' other disciples did. In Mark chapter 3, she and Jesus' brothers come to a place where Jesus is ministering and, and try to take him away because they feel he has lost his mind completely. Even so, this Mary had a prominent role among Jesus' followers during his earthly lifetime, and according to Christian tradition, she had a prominent voice in the Jerusalem church, even after Jesus' resurrection. Next comes another Mary, Mary Magdalene. Mary is mentioned by name, Mary Magdalene is mentioned by name 12 times in the New Testament, which is more than the mentions of many of the 12 disciples. We know where she's from because her last name, Mary Magdalene, tells us that she's from a city called Magdala, a town on the Sea of Galilee. Luke chapter 8 tells us that Jesus had cast seven demons out of her. And she was among the women who supported Jesus and the disciples with their own financial resources. She was present with Mary, Jesus' mother, at the crucifixion. And most importantly, all four Gospels tell us that Mary Magdalene was the first to find the empty tomb on Easter morning. And maybe the most significant, that this Mary became the first evangelist the first witness to Jesus' resurrection as she ran to tell the other disciples that Jesus had risen. In the Gospels of John and Luke, there are two sisters who are very prominent, Mary and Martha, the sisters of Lazarus. And yes, there are a lot of Marys among the disciples. This Mary, sometimes called Mary of Bethany, is the one who sat at Jesus' feet, listening to him teach, while Martha was busy preparing the meal in the kitchen. John tells us that this Mary was the one to anoint Jesus with perfume before his death. And Mary and Martha are shown to be close personal friends of Jesus, bringing the Lord even to tears as they tell him of the death of their brother. Lazarus. There are still other women disciples who we don't know anything about, unfortunately, but who were important enough to be mentioned by name in the Gospels, especially in Mark chapter 15 and Luke chapter 8. Salome, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, Joanna the wife of Chusa, and Susanna are all mentioned by name. Joanna's husband, Chuzo, was a chief steward for King Herod. And that tells us that some of these women disciples were quite wealthy and important. Others, like Salome, became even more important in Christian tradition after the Bible period than in the scriptures themselves. 
So what can we learn from all of these great women of faith who played such important roles in the Gospels? What do they have to teach us? Well, there's a lot that we can learn from them. But in the interest of time, I'll just mention three things. First and foremost, we learn faithfulness from these women. They stood by Jesus during the darkest times in his life. They were there at the crucifixion. And unlike the male disciples, they didn't run away and hide for fear of their lives in those dark times. They were with Jesus during his last moments. They helped to bury him in the tomb. They even returned to the tomb on Easter morning, prepared to anoint his body for burial. This is how we know faithfulness. Not from, people, not from how people act in good times, but in the darkest of moments. And we become people of faith, not when God seems to answer our every prayer, but in the times when God sees silence. And yet we still hope and trust in him. And the women of the gospel showed great faithfulness, and we can do well to imitate that in our own lives. The women of the gospels also teach us stewardship, the right management of the things God has entrusted to each one of us. We're told that these women had resources and that they used them to support Jesus and the disciples in ministry. Martha's sister Mary did not hesitate to lavish expensive perfume upon Jesus in an act of love and service. And other women of the Gospels did likewise. It would have been easy for these women to downplay their importance in the early church as the cultures around them might have done. They could have said, we're just women. We have nothing to contribute to this project. Let the men do it all. But out of love for their Savior, they were motivated to share what they had to bless Jesus and his followers. These women of faith teach us how to love Jesus. We see the men of the Gospels doing the work of preaching and teaching and healing, but it's the women who show their love for him. They lavish gifts upon Jesus. They spend time with him, just listening. They cook meals for him, and they stick by him right to the end on the cross. The women of the gospel show us what love looks like. I'd like to close today by sharing some excerpts from a poem by Joe Wilmer that offer some of the feelings of a woman of faith in today's world. It's called Just a Woman. Just a woman. This I am. Just a woman with childhood dreams desires and life's reality all pressed together in my heart. Just a woman, this I am. But one day I became a very special woman. That day, I fell to my knees and became his woman. I cried out to Christ and he cleansed me of sin. I gave him my heart and my life. Just a woman? No, no more. Just a woman? No, no more. For I am growing spiritually and being shaped through trials and tears. Shaped into a most beautiful woman of faith. As we prepare to come to the Lord's table, the place where the true love of God was made known to us, let us reflect on the gifts that women of faith have given to each one of us. Those gifts given by our mothers, by our sisters, by our wives, by our daughters, by our friends. 
They have given to us what they have received, the love that comes from above. Let us prepare our hearts and minds now to receive the love that comes to us in the form of Christ's body and blood. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the many women that you have put in our lives. For the love that they have shown to you and to us. For their support and their care and their nurture for their leadership and the ways they have stepped into roles of such great importance in our church and in our world. Prepare us to receive the love they offer us as we receive the love you offer to us in the Lord's Supper. Pray all of this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Jesus said, Come to me, you who are heavily burdened and weary, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and highest joy, that we should at all times, in all places, give thanks to you, O Holy Lord, everlasting God. You created the heavens and the earth and all that is in them. You made us in your own image, and in countless ways you showed us your mercy. Therefore, with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, we worship and adore your glorious name, praising you forevermore. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory and blessing are yours, O holy God, for in your great mercy you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ. He took our human nature and suffered death on the cross for our redemption. There he made a perfect sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We give you thanks that the Lord Jesus on the night before he died took bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it and said, Take and eat. This is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we break one bread and share one cup, giving thanks for your saving love in Jesus Christ. As you raise our Lord from death and call us with him from death to life, we give ourselves to you to live for him in joy and grateful praise. Amen. Brothers and sisters, this is the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us take it together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go out into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue now in an attitude of prayer. This is an opportunity for us to bring our prayer concerns, thanksgivings, before the Lord. Um, I know of one Thanksgiving, I heard uh, somebody 
who's present in the church today was on a team that won uh, state championships this weekend. And so Isaac. Not let us come before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we bring all of these people that are on our hearts and minds before you. We are thankful that you are a God who hears our prayers and who answers according to your will in our lives. We ask, Lord, that you would hear the prayers that we lift up in the presence of others and those, present, those prayers that are upon our own hearts and minds. We pray for those who are going through medical procedures, those who are hospitalized. Lord, that you would provide for them, that you would encourage and strengthen them, that you would provide healing and care for their lives. We ask for this nation and this world as we are living through this continued crisis, we ask that you would continue to be with us, that you would bring healing where healing is needed, that you would bring strength where strength is needed. Strengthen and encourage especially those who have been offering so much care for so long that they're becoming exhausted. Lord, give them new energy and new strength. Give them support and friendship and all that they need to be able to carry on in the important work that you've given them to do. We pray for the leaders of this church and all the churches that call upon your name, Lord, the, the elders, the pastors. Lord, give strength, give courage, give direction, give a sense of humility in the leadership that they have been called upon to do. We ask you to bless the leaders of this nation, Give wisdom and insight. Let them lead with dignity, with courage, and with humility. We pray all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we pray also in the words that our Lord taught us to pray in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Is there anyone who's worshiping with us for the first time today? If not, we're all new friends, so turn around and greet each other with a nod of the head, a shake of the hand, and a good thought in your heart. I'd like to remind you all to remain socially distant warm in heart but close in heart but distant in body from each other at least six feet um, when we were dismissed from the service. The special ministry um, to children with special needs will meet on April the 3rd at 1 p.m. I'd like to remind you also for a new website sunsetpcchurchspring.org. Please check it out and pass the information along 
so that others may be able to join us in worship and ministry. <clears throat> Our English Bible study continues at 3 p.m. on Tuesdays in Zoom and Spanish at 7 p.m. on Thursdays via Zoom. Sunday school classes are 10, 10 a.m. for English and Spanish on the mornings for the adults, uh, Spanish classes on the mornings at 10 a.m. in Duck Rep Hall. Church directories are still available, available. Um, if you, your family has not picked up yours, please remember to check with the office and, and we will be happy to let you have one. Food Pantry continues to serve those with a need on Saturday mornings between 8 and 9 a.m. And we are always happy to receive your gifts of canned goods, particularly pop top and especially things that don't have to be um, cooked. Plastic bags are also welcome. If you know of someone who's in need of food or clothing, please speak to the pastor and he will make arrangements for those needs to be met. <clears throat> if you would like to become a member of Sunset Presbyterian Church, and our follower of the Lord, please talk to the pastor and he can give you directions in how to join us in one body. Showering Love Ministry continues to be present on Tuesdays and Fridays from 8 a.m. until noon for those who would like to avail themselves of a beautiful shower. So and uh, also they hand out hygiene items so again we need you to pass the word along to anyone who could use the service uh, and speaking of directories please remember if your information is incorrect in the directory please let Anna know so the changes can be made our next session meeting is march 15th which is next week at 7 p.m which is a Monday night, so um, let's continue to keep your prayers for Sunset and the, and the session. And we ask you to remember Sunset each day, to pray. We're not talking about praying for the building, but we're talking about praying for the people who make up the membership of Sunset. Pray for the ministry. Pray that the Lord will be able to use us to do the ministry that he needs to have done at this location and by the people who are here. Pray for the pastor, keep him in your thoughts. I'd like to remind you also to subscribe to YouTube and to Facebook and to watch the services and let those who are not able to attend know that there's an opportunity for them to join in worship with us or in Bible study with us via the website, Facebook, and Zoom. As usual, we are grateful to Flora Promotions for blessing us with flowers each week, as well as to Publix for the donation of bread and sweets that we all enjoy. And, and there's quite plenty today, so you know, let's give God thanks as well for these blessings that come to us and pass these blessings along to those in need. Riverland Recovery continues to meet on Mondays and Fridays from noon at noon. I'm sorry, on Monday and Fridays at noon and Monday nights at 7 p.m. at uh, Abiding Savior Church, also known as Grace Alone, which is 1900 Southwest 35th Avenue, just around the corner here in Fort Lauderdale. Next week is Daylight Saving Time. So we're all going to spring forward. <laughs> so remember that to, to change your clocks and to remember that we will be meeting a little bit earlier than usual. Um, so please be sure to join us an hour earlier than your usual next week. Uh, we would be negligent if we do not also um, say to the pastor, we are very grateful 
to your time here. You have been with us. This marks three years that you have been a pastor, an official pastor at Sunset. And during this week, I encourage you to share your thoughts with him or to send a note, but give him a word of encouragement, but especially to keep him and his family in prayer as he continues to guide the ministry at Sunset. So let's give the pastor a hand. And at this time, I'd like to remind you that your offerings can be placed at the back of the church in the um, box there. But we are going to stand and sing the dog song today as the pastor gives thanks for the offerings to give back to the giver. celebrate those that you have put in our lives, our mothers and sisters and friends and wives. We thank you for the gift of employment and the gift of retirement. We thank you for the gifts of friends and family and the many material gifts that you give us as well. But we bring these tithes and these offerings into your presence. We set them aside and we ask that they be dedicated to your service in this place. We pray that you would multiply those gifts, that you would bless those givers. Multiply your blessings upon us, Lord, that we might be a greater blessing to others as you have called us to be. We pray all these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you don't know the sweetness of Jesus, then draw closer to him and contemplate the words of the next song that we shall be singing together. Jesus, the very thought of thee with sweetness fills my breath.